We have the extreme pleasure of being joined by Reverend Kate Berkeley from Christchurch Ellerslie this morning to talk about Good Friday. Well, good morning, Kate. Hi, everyone. It's so great to be here on what is um, a really uh, special and important um, time of the year for Christians. I thought I'd just um, have a quick chat about Good Friday. Yeah. Um, why do we call it Good Friday? Um, and then just a little uh, preface before I uh, kick in that this is going to have some not so good parts to it. So um, really well, the, the good is, you know, it's it ain't happy. Well, that's why um, it's so I confusing to some, of, um, right? Because I think when we talk about Good Friday, <laughs> it seems a little unintuitive as to why I would even call that in the first place, right? Like so, an oxymoron, really. Yeah, precisely. And actually, um, you know, Professor Google's very helpful in um, sh- showing – some of the other um, names that it has in other parts um, of the world. So in some places it's called Holy Friday Mm -hmm. um, and some places it's called Sorrowful Friday. Mm -hmm. So those are probably a little bit more accurate to um, what, what, what it's called. Um, But one of the things that people sometimes think it might come from is um, God's Friday or Mm. um, God Friday. And in fact, that's probably not the case, but I really like it um, that we would call it God's Friday. Uh, And so I just wanted to share a little bit of my thoughts around um, what it would look like if we thought of Good Friday as God's Friday. Please do. Uh, Yeah. So uh, basically we're in this situation, for those of you who maybe need a wee refresher on Good Friday, um, where Jesus has um, shared the Last Supper with his, uh, I've got do you guys ever have your dogs at your world's biggest small group? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, dogs, dogs are always welcome. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dog is saying hello. Um, I'm sure at the Last that, Supper they had their pets as well. So Absolutely, yeah. So we had the Last Supper. Jesus has gone to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Um, the betrayal of Judas has happened and Jesus has been arrested. And then we kind of enter into the events of Good Friday. And let's be honest. No one was expecting this. Um, We have a situation where Jesus has um, amassed thousands, potentially thousands of followers. When you think about feeding the 5,000, they'd Mm. all come um, to hear him. Mm. Jerusalem was packed with people coming for um, the feast of the Passover. And so there were crowds and crowds of people. And I bet they were not expecting this, um, that this man, Jesus, would by the end of the day be strung up on a cross like a criminal. Yeah, well, it and seems so kind of crazy because they were, you know, enamored by his speaking and his talking. Yeah. And it was customary, too, to release a prisoner. And you would have thought that he would have been the favorable one, not the exactly. insurrecting Barabbas. Exactly. Who was uh, a murderer and a revolutionary. And to be honest, like people dying for causes was not an, a new thing, not something that would have really shocked them. Um, you had martyrdoms, um, Judas Maccabeus. Uh, Even I was just reading the story of King Saul again, who could see the writing on the wall in battle and chose to kill himself instead. And then in the ancient times, you had um, the surrounding kind of cultures had uh, stories of gods who would die and be reborn. So these ideas are not like really shocking. What was so, so shocking is how Jesus died. Um, the idea that someone who had been such a good person, who had um, who had taught so amazingly and done all these miracles, fulfilled all these prophecies, would then be subjected to the most humiliating way of dying, um, the most kind of um, shameful, mm. the most psychologically and reputationally destructive way of dying. Um, and there's this amazing uh, pastor and author uh, called Fleming Rutledge, and she argues, she's she's basically written the textbook on the crucifixion, which I think has got to be a really downer topic, but <laughs> she argues that we've done a really great job of sanitizing the cross. And I think mm. that him, the old rugged cross, you know, yeah. kind of has a kind of hokey sound to it. Um, but actually the cross was this real instrument of torture. Mm. It wasn't just physical, it was psychological, and it was actually designed, you know, you were in a public place, People were walking past you, spitting at you, jeering at you. You're expected to be as uh, humiliated as possible. And so um, Jesus, who was the Messiah, um, for him to die wasn't just kind of, well, we weren't expecting that, but the way he died was so deeply humiliating and shameful for him and for his followers. Um, This wasn't a noble death. This was, he's a criminal. He's Mm -hmm. been bound to be a criminal and we are discrediting him in the most powerful way that the Roman Empire could come up with. 
Um, and so I just find that so amazing that sort of God's Friday was where God would willingly choose this path of humiliation. It's so deeply humiliating. It's so devastating for his followers, perhaps for us. And it is so surprising. Mm. And that makes it kind of wonderful. Um, yeah. It's the best news. Um, and, you know, the, the early Christian writers, they really couldn't cope with um, putting it all in a box and making it all tidy and neat. So they had all these different ways of describing it. Um, things like um, Jesus was a sacrifice for us or um, Jesus paid a ransom for us or Jesus was victorious over death for us or Jesus paid the penalty um, to satisfy um, God's wrath. And all these, and we'd call those kind of um, atonement metaphors, um, but, you know, we still have so much to wrestle with in this, in Good Friday, that incredible um, humiliation that Jesus underwent for us. It's really violent. It's really brutal. Mm. Uh, and we shouldn't lose sight of that. But it's such a good reminder that God's way is really surprising as well. Mm. Um, we can't kind of put God in a box. And so I just wanted to finish with a scripture uh, from Hebrews 12, which um, Hebrews just Sorry, I'm being poured by my dog. He wants to read the Bible too. <laughs> hey, love, love a dog who loves the Bible. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Loves exactly. the word of God. Exactly. So this is um, Hebrews 2. Um, Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And you know what you've reminded me of in that scripture? The fact that he went through that brutal suffering, which is incomprehensible for us to truly understand, yet that joy set before him must have been so great mm. that it mm. was so worth it. And we get yeah. to have that same joy as well. Exactly. It's such good news. And so it's Good Friday. You know, this is um, Jesus's incredible delight to reconcile us to God through his sacrifice. It's amazing. It's it's definitely worth really, really reflecting on. Yeah, and it's certainly a very worthwhile topic of conversation mm. on this week that leads us to Good Friday as well. So uh, Reverend Kate Berkeley from Christ Church, Ellerslie, thanks so much for taking a bit of time to share this with us today. Thanks, team. It's awesome. Have a great day. Hey, we really hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you like and subscribe and turn your notifications on. And I uh, hope you enjoy the next one. Yeah, we'll catch you then.